should we go for a walk? <laughs> it's Easter Monday. It's been a horrible day. It's been a horrible wet and windy day. I did actually go out a little bit earlier and it, got, it was raining so horribly, uh, I thought this was going to ruin the entire experience. So I went home for an hour or two. So I'm setting out again, sort of middle to late afternoon. But we're going to go a bit of a magical mystery tour. We're going to start off, as any good walk should do, following the scent of a clue of a great local mystery, a fantastic myth. And then after that, we're going to let our feet guide us. I love these type of local walks. They're very synonymous for me with public holiday strolls. I just leave the house with no clear direction and be guided by my senses by my sense of direction, maybe. Who knows, my sense of direction is terrible, but my sense of a good walk tends to be all right. Every walk's a good walk. Or as Ian Sinclair says, the walk is the walk. The walk is the walk. That's our motto for today. The walk is the walk. Leighton Cricket Ground over there. That's in, uh, it's in at least one video, if not two or three, which I will either link to below or just, just go for a little look, actually. And uh, it's fascinating. Fascinating cricket ground with a great history, including test cricket. There you go. Well, this is Grove House, Leighton, just off Leighton High Road. And according to the local intel we're about to dip into, fantastical stories that the remains of the Roman villa were found here, or some of the Roman buildings were found in the garden behind this building, which is interesting because that kind of contradicts other things that I've read, but interesting. The reason I was passed on this fantastic correspondence via email between a couple of old gentlemen of the area was because it addressed issues of flooding in the area and it posited there were a number of streams that ran beneath the ground. One of them was here in Windsor Road. I bang on about Leytonstone's lost river Phillybrook often enough, and I found the other branch of it up in Walthamstow as well. That's been a subject of real interest to me for a number of years. And then also I've walked the Hyam Hill Brook in this area over in Walthamstow. But what's interesting in this, in this correspondence between these two old gentlemen, allotment holders, concerned with the flooding of the allotments is that they said there were three other, originally back in history, three other streams that ran through the area. One, his current was running under here, Windsor Road, down near the Leighton Orient Ground, which is at the end of the street. And then there were two other streams in adjacent roads. The Essex earthquake of the 1800s forced two of those streams together into the Philly Brook. But a third one still ran down another adjacent road here. Never heard of them before, never heard of them, which is really interesting. So I'm trying to see if I can see evidence of it here. So Leighton Orient's ground is just on the right of the frame here. And the Phillybrook runs along the end there in Coronation Gardens. So you can see that this stream here, minor stream as it's called, in Windsor Road could have been diverted there into the Phillybrook. I don't know if you can hear the Orient there at home. Can you hear the singing? So this building site is actually at the end of uh, Windsor Road. It must have had to accommodate the underground water sources. The Phillybrook would run through it and also um, whatever these other streams are, this Windsor stream as well, I guess that was pushed into the Phillybrook. And in all my tracing and stalking of the Phillybrook, I don't think I've ever shot this angle of looking down into the river valley. You can see it clearly looking down into a large dip there at the bottom near Leighton Orient's ground. And this is an area with such rich history, Ossia way over there. It was the site of a discovery of a Neolithic or perhaps Bronze Age settlement, a small settlement, but still a significant one in the marshes. That's in my book, This Other London. So the source for that is in the London Archaeologist. And Thornhill Road here is the location of another of the streams that got pushed into the Phillipbrook by the earthquake. But um, yeah, let's, let's stroll up here and turn into, Winds, uh, into Wilmot where there could still be a stream. And these streets around here really do sort of form the footprint of the terrain of the Roman villa 
that I was previously aware of that's established by archaeology and reports. And also, I think it's also the terrain of the, uh, the Saxon Tun by the Lee, Lay Tun, which is around the same sort of area. And of course, we have the Neolithic village over there. So there's a consistency of settlement, isn't there, in this area here, where these streams apparently flowed. So Wilmot Road here is where there could still be a buried river running beneath the streets. Whether it runs down the road, or whether it runs across it, I'm not entirely sure. Look, I can see some manhole covers here. Let's investigate. Can't hear anything, car coming. Of course, what happens next is I publish this video and people that live in the area or have lived in the area or know people that live in the area will come forth with tales of flooding and gurgling streams running through their gardens. Look, this is, that would be a classic indicator of a river, but no if it's going the other side. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I have looked on the old maps, uh, the old OS maps, and which, um, the gentleman in the email, they do talk about it showing. I can't see it in a way that you can see the Philly Brook. There are some straight lines that could be ditches, drainage ditches or things of that sort. Look, and there's another thing there, which again, I mean, it could be if we followed that through, we might find there's a meander of a river could have cut through there and meandered and gone through there, maybe. A lot of crowd noise coming from the Orient today, obviously. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> top of the league, Orient, top of the league, going well. And if you didn't already know, yes, I love this stuff so much. This is my favorite activity. When you get a scent of a clue and you go out to see what you can see, and it starts a dialogue. I post something, people reply, and it goes on and on and on. It's fantastic. Right, where to next? coin-operated payphone. Those feel like, it's like a relic. This is like an amazing artifact. It should be protected. For years, I always thought Etlo House here was a, was a bit of a late Victorian or Edwardian folly, but I think it is a house of some, you know, decent heritage. I'll put dates on the screen. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But on the subject of our mysterious Lost Rivers, the email mentioned another water source, now whether it was the same one or a different one or not, that ran through the grounds here of Etlow House called the Etlow Pipe. It may have risen here in the grounds, actually. It may have just been a spring with a pond. Now, I don't think I can go bowling around the back garden, but I think there is a pond in the back gardens here. And it's really sad to see the Antelope Pub over there still boarded up. I'd read that they've been successful in trying to save the pub and it was going to be reopened, but Evidently not, which is a real shame. And I'm going to resist the urge to go down Marsh Lane. It's great to walk the same streets again and again and again. And if you can't make a record of it, you learn so much and it's a continuous layering and re-layering on everything. <laughs> I was going to add a different word in there. I think I right, over egg the pudding. But, uh, and also, I guess as well, in an internal sense, there's the nostalgia and the revisiting of memories. It's really, really wonderful. I think we're just going to keep going. Follow me. I think we can keep going north up towards Walthamstow. And then who knows, we might cross the marshes. We may just carry straight on. Who I mean, everything's, everything's on the table. This is where the, the legendary Percy Ingalls Bakery used to be, isn't it, I believe? It's a tragic loss to the streets of East London. Marconi Road. There's got to be a story behind that. There's some industrial buildings down the end of the road. I wonder if there was a, a wireless factory down there. 
So we've crossed Lee Bridge Road here. I'm just going to keep pushing on in the straight line up Mark House Road. This was always my escape north, really. But I had no idea where we'll end up. Won't be such a mystery to you because it might be in the title of the video, but on the other hand, it might not. It's quite an interesting looking kind of arts and crafts housing estate behind St Saviour's here. But what's more interesting that is on the site of, um, of a farm that included an Elizabethan farmhouse or barn that was destroyed in the Second World War, which is incredible. All of that is in my Dagenham video, by the way, which I will inevitably link to below. So these new flats here on uh, South Grove, Walthamstow, I believe this was built on the site of, a, of an old brewery. Well, I'm not sure if it was previous to being the flats, but originally there was a brewery here, I'm led to believe, which is interesting because now Walthamstow hosts several small breweries, but significant ones. Turning now into St. James Street, Walthamstow. We're still pushing north. I've never actually been into this kind of box park thing here on St James Street. Maybe today's the day. I could fancy a coffee. There was no coffee, only beer from the brilliant Pillars Brewery, or Walthamstow Brewery. Although I was tempted to have one up in the sun up there, I think that may have been the end of the walk. <laughs> and you deserve better than that. So I'll try, there's a cost of coffee up here. If not, we'll just, we'll just keep going. And of course, Costa's shut. It's about 20 past five on Easter Monday and being punished by the beer gods there for turning down beer, but there you go. Beer is your reward at the end of a walk. That's why sometimes people go, why don't you stop for a pint? Well, the problem is I love to save it for the end of a walk. And also, as we know, like alcohol, beautiful drug that it is, is a little bit of a depressant, isn't it? It sort of brings you down a little bit. It sort of sucks the energy away a little bit. So I like to kind of save that for when I need the, uh, a, the treat at the end, the reward, and a little bit of a painkiller, perhaps, <laughs> to ease the muscles. So we'll go down uh, Copper Mill Lane because I love it. Uh, but then we're going to turn up a road which I don't recollect walking along before, which could partly deal with uh, another Lost River question. So now we're going to turn off Copper Mill Lane into Edward Road. Still now heading north again. I was hoping there might be a break between the houses on the left-hand side. I'll, um, I'll explain my reasoning in a second. So really, I don't know, this street should possibly be on my Dagenhambrook walk. I led that a few times for Waltham Forest, London Borough Culture. I think we can actually walk in the road because the road is kind of partially closed. Um, because the Dagenham Brook is running over there behind these houses. Well, there's a field there and it's running on the other side. So I always end it at the last point where you can see it. But I wondered whether there was gonna be a break, I don't know why. But what's interesting is the, really the, I don't, the thing I don't really understand is why the Dagenham Brook and the Higham Hill Brook are separate watercourses, because really they are the same continuous body of water. The Higham Hill Brook comes down from Higham Hill I'll link below to that wall, cuts across Blackhorse Lane and then drops into the Dagenham Brook on the industrial estate there on Blackhorse Lane. And then it carries on flowing. I mean, obviously, I, and I think that's where the Dagenham Brook starts down there in that industrial estate, which is so it really is the continuation of the Higham Hill Brook, um, which is interesting because the Dagenham Brook is regarded as like not really a river, but a sewer, whereas or a ditch, you know, like a drainage ditch, that's why it's called 
um, the Dagenham Brook because it was created by the Dagenham Commissioners of Sewers. That might be, I've just worked out why it's a different name. That's why, because it's a sewer that was fed by the Higham Hill Brook. There you go. So this view here from Black Horse Road has completely changed, hasn't it, this vista? You can still see the Royal Standard building there clinging on for dear life and I think there is going to be a development there that will include a music venue. There's a lot of plans for Black Horse Lane. So we're going to go down there and check in on some of the recent developments. And maybe, maybe, my fear fervent hope is that there's a view of the Heim Hill Brook. I might be wrong. I've never actually been around this new development in Walthamstow here. It's pretty uninspiring, but it's a great location. guess is a reference to the, uh, the Lee navigation, which is not far away off the end of this road. And it's interesting that there is a little walkway through here to what I think may be the Dagenham Brook, or at least the flood relief channel. Fantastic. You can see here we have the Dagenham Brook. This is a new section of the Dagenham Brook. I think I have to extend the walk now. The Dagenham Brook walk has just got a bit longer. You can see it very clearly down there. Basically, it collects the Higham Hill Brook just not far from here, just along there. So this really is the start of the Dagenham Brook in many ways. Well, it is. I've got to say, that moment alone makes the day's walk worthwhile. It really, really does. Um, I'm starting to get a bit tired, actually. My legs are a bit heavy. Isn't it interesting? You always get these kind of payoffs just when you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure how much further I can walk. It's great. Well, we do want to see if the Higham Hillbrook has been daylighted in the new development up here, as promised. I don't know if that development's finished or where it's at, so good chances it'll just be a building site that we can't get to, but definitely want to check in on that. And that might be the end of the walk. Let's see how we feel. These are cottages here. A date from 1834. Yeah, so this development is, <laughs> is that doesn't even know, I don't, so it doesn't even look like they've made any progress at all with this development here. But when I looked at the plans, it does seem as if they're going to daylight the Heim Hill Brook as it runs through the development, because it's basically running beneath my feet where I'm stood right now and it continues beside this industrial building here and drops into the Dagenham Brook directly uh, behind those gates there. Unfortunately, you can't really get a view of it. I think this is where our walk ends today. You never really know and then you can feel it. And what's interesting is I was feeling like the energy hadn't really taken off my legs. It's heavy in the legs. And actually, I've just, I have got, not my second wind, my first wind, but I feel like Coming back here to this industrial estate on the course of the Higham Hill Brook sort of resolved something that emerged quite naturally on this walk today. Like the walk had its own narrative that it seemed to want to pick up on the spirit of the Lost Rivers that we found in Leighton with those three potential, or is it four potential or dubious Lost Rivers? <laughs> and yeah, that was somehow that must have just then lodged in my mind and then was haunting the Dagenham Brook, seeing that section of the Dagenham Brook there, and now sensing the Heim Hill Brook coming back to life. So thank you for coming on that walk. It'll be a little bit different to usual, but um, I, you know, I, I love to do these, just these spontaneous meanders in a way. I've just got one little scent that I'm following and I just see where it carries me. And it's carried me here to Black Horse Lane. So um, yeah, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming with me. Um, thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon and here on the YouTube memberships. And thank you for coming every week to watch these videos. It means the world to me. So as I always like to say, 
and we'll continue to say I look forward to seeing you on the next walk wherever that may be. I've got a vague idea this time actually, I've got a vague idea. I did make a plan with somebody, I'm not sure if it's confirmed yet, so I'll find out if it is. If it is, it's gonna be a really good one. <laughs> <laughs>